The last of the three variables that control the exposure of your image is aperture. Aperture can be useful when determining the correct exposure, but also useful in achieving certain visual effects. So, a quick roundup of how a digital camera works. Light passes through a hole in your lens known as the aperture. When you press the shutter button, the shutter mechanism exposes the camera image sensor to the light for a period of time and then closes. The sensor then captures the image and stores it. The hole or opening that allows light to pass through the optics in the lens is called the aperture. This is kinda like the pupil in your eye. It controls the amount of light that enters the lens and hits the imaging sensor. And while the disadvantages associated with shutter speed and ISO can be sometimes significant to the outcome of your image, the disadvantages that stem from the aperture of a lens are far less profound. Think about your eyes for a second. Whenever you go into a dark room where there is little light, your iris expands in an attempt to gather as much light as possible so you can see. And when you move to a well-lit environment, your iris gets smaller and smaller because there's more than enough light in the room for you to see correctly. Aperture affects your exposure and can be individually manipulated in order to achieve the correct exposure in your image. In low light, you use a wider aperture to capture more light and in brighter environments, you use a smaller aperture to capture less light. Aperture also controls one other important factor in your image, and that is something called the depth of field. Depth of field is the amount of your image that is sharp from the front to the back. When you take a photo, you're taking an image of a three-dimensional space with the things in the front closest to the camera and those at the back furthest from the camera. If you draw a straight line from the front of the camera to the very back of what's visible in the scene, the depth of field is the length on that line where everything is in focus. The depth of field can be shallow or narrow depending on your aperture, or it can be large or deep. A deep depth of field means that both the foreground and background of the image are sharp. And a shallow depth of field will generally have a subject that is in focus with the background or foreground completely out of focus, creating a visual aesthetic that is pleasing to the eye. This blurred out or defocusing effect is known as bokeh or bokeh and is a property of the lens that is being used. A large aperture will give you a narrower depth of field and hence providing a more pronounced bokeh or defocusing effect in your image. A smaller aperture will result in a deep depth of field where a very large of both the foreground and the background will be in focus. So all those very interesting and dreamy portrait photos you see where the model is in focus with the background nicely blurred out in some very creamy bokeh are shot at wide apertures. It's important to note that since a wide aperture and narrow depth of field gives you a smaller area in focus, the bokeh or defocusing effects can be both in the foreground and in the background depending on how you compose your shot. So wider apertures are useful when you want to isolate your subject from its surrounding and smaller apertures are ideal when you want everything in focus like when doing landscape photography of large terrain. So we have spoken about what aperture is and how it affects your image, but we haven't looked at how it is presented on your camera and lens. The aperture is a function of your lens. Some lenses have wide apertures and some don't. The more technically engineered and premium lenses tend to have wider apertures with cheaper options having smaller apertures. The aperture on your lens and in your camera is expressed in terms of a number known as the F number or F stop. The F is always at the front. So for example, you can have an aperture of F1.8 or F8 or even F16 and so on. Now remember we said that the aperture is a function of the lens that is being used. While the F stop or F number is actually derived from the ratio of the lens focal length to the diameter of the entrance pupil or opening at the front of the lens. We'll cover the f-stop and focal lengths in depth in future classes. For now, it's important for you to know the differences between a wide and small aperture and the f-numbers that are associated with the two. One very important but confusing area of understanding for beginner photographers is that a wide aperture translates into a small f-number or f-stop and a small aperture represents a large f-stop. This is very important and you need to really pay attention to make sure you always get this right. I suggest jotting down some diagrams and some notes in your notebook. A lens with an f-stop of f2 has a wider aperture than a lens that has an f-number of f4. So small numbers represent large apertures and large numbers represent small apertures. This generally results in a lot of confusion because it is the opposite of what a lot of people would expect but there is logic behind this madness. Remember that the F number is derived from a ratio between the lens focal length and entrance pupil diameter. So picture this for a greater understanding. Suppose you have two lenses, both of equal focal lengths, 
We know that the F number is equal to the focal length divided by the diameter of the entrance pupil. The two lenses have different apertures or different entrance pupil diameters, meaning that they are letting in different amounts of light and hence both having different F numbers. The one with the larger entrance pupil will have a wider aperture because the opening is bigger, but the F number will be smaller. And conversely for the other lens, the F number will be bigger due to the smaller pupil diameter. When looking at f-stops, always consider this equation to help you gain a better understanding. And always remember that the f-number has an inversely proportional relationship to the pupil diameter of the lens at a given focal length. As mentioned before, aperture is a function of the lens and while every digital camera has a sensor and a shutter, the aperture becomes the most important exposure control because it is easy to manipulate without any drawbacks to the image quality. Not every lens has a fast aperture and that is why lenses with wide apertures, also known as fast lenses, are very expensive. A camera is a camera. That cannot change. But what a photographer can change is the lenses. You can use lenses with faster apertures or longer zooms and better optics, all of which can result in a better image. So in summary, we have discussed that the aperture is the opening in the lens that controls the amount of light going into the camera. It is represented by an F number where a smaller value is a wider aperture and a bigger value is a smaller aperture. We also know that the aperture affects two things, the exposure of your image and the depth of field of your image. Images where the foreground and background is blurred out in bokeh have a narrow depth of field, a wide aperture, and a small F number. Photos where the foreground and background are in focus have a deep depth of field, a small aperture, and a large F number. And unlike ISO and shutter speed, which have disadvantages that can significantly affect your image in a negative way, manipulating your aperture doesn't really result in any sort of drawback to your image quality. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the rest of the lessons in this class where we focus on other fundamental aspects of digital photography.